Hello, and welcome to my sort of impromptu live stream about the President's Own United States Marine Band uh, and Marine Chamber Orchestra audition list that's coming up, right? It's a very, 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 very long list. Uh, not, oh, I shouldn't say that. There are many lists that are longer than this one, but it's it varied is the key word there. And uh, I wanted to walk through it. I know most of these excerpts, and so I thought I would at least sort of talk through the ones that I know and talk about how I would go about learning the ones that I don't. So um, that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do it in order, and we're going to do all of them. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one. Um, there's one that I don't know right away, and that's the Sousa Golden Jubilee. Uh, but we can look at it as a march, and uh, or as well, it may not be a march. Or we'll look at it together. Uh, but the first thing you need to do if you are thinking about going out for the Marine Band audition is make sure that you uh, are actually qualified. There's a long list here in uh, that are you know musical requirements and qualifications. Uh, they give you your uh, weight standards. So I just barely make it for the uh, five foot six category. Um, so just make sure that these are things that are you're capable of uh, or that, that uh, describe you uh, in a positive way. Uh, for instance, that you uh, can have security clearance. And uh, in fact, I just read this one was really good. Uh, you have to call my former babysitter, Doug Burian, if you've had laser eye surgery. So uh, make sure you do that before you spend a ton of time. Now, this list is great because it's very standard stuff most, most of the time. And so uh, it would not kill you to learn this list. But you can't go out for the audition if you don't meet military requirements. So that's the first thing to be wary of. Uh, and it's all in here. It's in the packet that you can just get off the website. It was emailed to me by the Marine Band uh, because I'm a trumpet teacher. And so... Um, so there you go. I think you're, there's also an age requirement. Uh, I know that it's up to 34 because I know that I'm not eligible. Uh, well, maybe that's not even true anymore. Current regulations authorize enlistment between 17 and 28. Oh yeah, and then uh, you can you can be up to 34 uh, with uh, with an age wa age waiver. So that's so I'm way that's the maximum 34 is the maximum so sorry I can't do this audition but I'm gonna do it in front of you guys so here we go uh, the first one on the list is everybody's favorite Charlier number two uh, which was Charlier number five in the old book but nobody cares about that so what's what's special about this one oh I had other audition material here I just did a different video on auditions for college so. Um, Charlie A2 is one that lots and lots and lots and lots of people know and it, because it's really a pretty etude and it's also the first pretty etude in the Charlie A book, right? You, a lot of people don't play one. They just go straight to two. They only know two. Uh, but if they've played one and then they get to two, two is hard, but it's pretty and it seems worth it. And, um, and this is just the first half uh, or first third, really. So uh, I'll play each one of these uh, my best. And we'll talk about each one briefly. I might stop in the middle of some of them to, to talk about them. But uh, one big thing that people talk about in this one that I can hopefully show you, but that I want you to listen for, is the arrivals on downbeats, right? A lot of people arrive on long notes instead. But in this case, that would be the first arrival would be on two. And that's very, uh, that's, that's not great. Also, just coming in on the first note, you, know, you might practice just some poo attacks on F. and then just add the tongue to it, just so you feel really secure on that first note. Now watch, I'll miss it, but anyway, here we go. I knew I would, anyway.
I stopped for a second there to turn off this mic. So hopefully that wasn't too... Don't do it at a time in that place the way I did because I was just trying to reach for my button. Um, but you can play with the time a little bit here. It's okay to be musical with the time, but just not too much. Don't make it sound like you're just flopping all over the place with it. Make sure that the rhythms that are written are the rhythms that you play and that that's audible, okay? Otherwise, uh, this, this is, uh, there's, there's not much to it except to play what's written on the page, which is considerable, right? Uh, the key signature is not a great one for us. And the, uh, so make sure you're in tune with yourself and in, in time, like I said, uh, and that you respect all the breath marks and all of the articulations. Uh, I, I believe that this has been reset. This is not what my Charlie A book looks like, and so it may have been reset for this. And in this case, I would do what their articulation markings are. Slur where it says the slur. Some of, the, some of these didn't feel like what I'm used to, and that could be because I've always done it wrong, or it could be that they've re-articulated re, re, um, some things uh, and, and slurred some things that used to be re-articulated. And so, but whatever's on this page, you need to do because the, if they changed it, it's for a reason, right? Okay, moving on. That's Charlie number two. Uh, the next one is Ives. Now, it does say, this is another important part at the beginning uh, on this page, actually, right here, the first page. It says, you can play B-flat or C-trumpet, and you don't need to play cornet. In fact, they don't want you to. It doesn't say that you cannot play... Uh, E-flat trumpet or something like that, but uh, I would stick to B-flat and C because they explicitly say it. And uh, it's actually one of the first times I've seen that on an audition list. Um, it may just have been that I haven't been paying attention, but I play this on C trumpet, and so I'm going to play it on C trumpet. It's written out for B-flat trumpet, and so that's what whatever, you know, whatever you feel comfortable playing it on and sound good on. Um, you also want to be able to go quickly in the, especially the preliminary round so if it takes you time to switch horns or something like that then maybe just learn it on everything on one trumpet right because uh, they don't want to wait for you to switch horns they've got, they're going to hear a hundred people uh, that day and so it's got to it's got to be efficient but anyway uh, this one is all about articulation and um, and it, you're combining two parts as one player here this is very common as well uh, you don't need to go uh, blisteringly fast. It says 138, which we can check. That's not 138, don't worry. So I wouldn't go too much terribly faster than that. If you're used to playing it maybe 150 or 60, uh, that might be fine. But they might also ask you to play it again, and so you need to be ready to play it at a normal tempo uh, because your breaths might be different, right? Otherwise, it's very uh, straight ahead. Just make sure your double tonguing is very even. And your single tonguing is uh, your. Th th you have this really nice. Ha, ba, 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 ba. You want this really nice lift to it. That's that's still capable of musical uh, line. version uh, a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of drive to the F's especially like that last part there um, uh, that's not gonna work for the rest of this time uh, third valve is sticky and again make sure you take care of this stuff up front before you go in the room uh, I did but not on this horn apparently so you don't want to take it out of time, but you do want to place it a little bit. And the same thing for, uh, let's see. Right, you want to make sure that those, those have a little bit of weight to them because they're arrivals in the key that you're playing in. All right, moving on. Um, that, uh, the next one is the Hindemith Symphony in B-flat. This is such a great piece. And uh, it's extremely, extremely loud when you actually do it. Here, it's just forte. and I mean, it's written just forte, but usually band directors really want you to play it loudly. 
Uh, and uh, I think it's just the, the texture of it. Da, 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 right? It's got this whole big, you know, the, the woodwinds are flying fingers doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and you're just playing this. Right? You're just playing this great, uh, interesting rhythmically and, uh, and, and sort of sonically, uh, this just big sound kind of melody. And so they tend to want us to play a little, a little extra. I also play this on B flat trump, uh, C trumpet. Uh, and also, I, I should mention this. I should have mentioned this earlier on. Uh, I haven't practiced any of these extra. I'm just walking through them together. So if I mess something up, um, we'll go back and sort of work out how, because that, that same thing might happen to you, and you might want to know how to work it out. Uh, and so I've allowed for that, and also because I wanted to do this video today and not after several days of practice. Um, and it's, it's something that I, I sort of also wanted to make a point about, that um, you need to have a lot of these things pretty well ready so that you could get them ready in, uh, in a day, in a week, in an hour, right? What if somebody calls you and says, hey, something happened. This happened to me a couple of years ago. Uh, I got a call and it said, they, they said on the phone, uh, hey, the, nobody can make it to the Messiah. Can you make it to the Messiah? And I was like, I guess. I mean, let me see if my piccolo trumpet has, like, the valves work on it, and uh, I'll, you know, well, that's not fair. I play piccolo at least once a week, but, but just, you know, like, I guess I'll play, you know, it was in the middle of a nutcracker run for me, just at the end, actually, and so I was wasted chop-wise, but I was like, well, if nobody else can be there, I guess it's better if I go, right? So, um, and I went, and it was fine. It wasn't my best messiah ever, but, you know, it was, it was better than not having a trumpet for the trumpet shall sound, right? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, all right. So, uh, Hindemith B flat, don't play too loud. Make sure that you play exact rhythms and, um, and try your best not to breathe during these crescendi uh, at the end. I, I probably will uh, without, without knowing exactly where I'm going to breathe uh, otherwise, but I'll, try, I'll, I'll do my best not to. Keep forgetting to turn this off, sorry. Sorry, how did you get those notes out? Um, so I, I, what I said, if you couldn't hear me before, I really, I breathed where I said I shouldn't breathe, and then I couldn't think of anything else, and then I couldn't even read music anymore, right? So uh, I, I also messed up the low notes a little bit. So how do you get those low notes out? Uh, well, they're in the middle of a line. You really just have to practice going to them without just flabbing out a little bit, all right? Or, or getting too tight. A lot of times we'll do one or the other, but it's, it's really about maintaining the ligature, the, the amount of uh, ability to vibrate, and it vibrates the same way. And so... sure where the best place to breathe is. I think I'm going to have to break one of those. Uh, yeah, that's the way to do it, I guess, is to break one of those uh, that I just did. Da, 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 da. And I can think I can make it after that. That's my best solution for now. If you can breathe somewhere that's like actually legit. In fact, in that low register, if you don't have any problem doing it, actually pretty well. We'll, we'll try for that one. I don't like to break that part up, but, uh, and I'm not sure that it'll come back for me, but we'll try it. Here we go. Whole thing.
I forgot to turn off my mic again. But anyway, that's that's a, a fair guess at that. That's I, I wouldn't win the audition with that performance, but uh, it's okay. That that gives you an idea of how to prepare it. And you just want to make sure you don't add a lot of vibrato or anything sort of gross to it. It's just about sound and it's about line, musical line, right? Um, and so you want to you, you play it a little cleaner than that. But uh, for the for our purposes in this sort of tutorial, uh, I think we can move on. So the next one is Outdoor Overture, which is a Copland piece. And this is uh, just a beautiful little solo. Again, I play this on, on the C trumpet just because it's an orchestral excerpt and that's how I learned it. It's very nice on the B flat trumpet and uh, I do recommend it, but uh, at any rate. So uh, what are the tips here? Uh, I mean, make sure that the rhythms are secure. In any audition, you have the three T's, right? Time, tone, and intonation. And the, they're all three on display here. Your time has to just be totally solid, that you, you're not playing with it. You don't want to... It says, it says freely with natural expression, but that's... Mm, I, I wouldn't do too much, right? Because it's going to just sound like you don't have good time. Uh, tone... Well, of course, it's cantabile. It's this. It, you're, you're all, your tone is always on display in an audition. And then intonation. Well, yeah, your intonation with yourself, right? Because nobody else is playing. But these are you're playing major triads, and they're very easy to hear if you're out of tune uh, on scales and major triads. So uh, then, just make sure you don't play a funny rhythm for these drag triplets, right? These da 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 and. That they're very even, right? Just that you're filling up the space. And if you're not comfortable with two against three, then you're going to play like two dotted quarter and then one quarter left over, right? Like the don't do that. That's not the rhythm. So anyway, that's that's what I got for this one. Now I'm going to try to keep remembering this. So not, again, not a perfect performance, but um, what you're looking for is that time and intonation, like I said, uh, some expression. You can certainly use vibrato on this one, and you want that vibrato to be color only if possible because that keeps your intonation intact, so not pitch vibrato. Uh, and then remember that the piumoso is faster uh, than the previous tempo, and so you don't hold that low C or low B flat concert as long as if you just held it in time, it goes considerably faster right there. And if you don't know the piece, then that, that will show. Uh, so that's what that one is about. Again, uh, C trumpet might not be the actual best trumpet to play it on, but you should play what's comfortable to you. And for me, that's C trumpet. All right, now we've got the Golden Jubilee, which uh, I said I don't know. And I, and I again, uh, emphasize that uh, the first thing I would do and I meant to do this before. I looked at the, the commercial stuff at the end, and I just ran out of time. But uh, what you should do with any piece you don't know is listen to it, right? So um, I will tell you, uh, I will do my best uh, impersonation of uh, having listened to it, because I've played a lot of marches, and I've been listening to marches all day, actually. I listen to the Advocate Brass Band's Hand Ac Hands Across the Sea album, which has all different uh, marches from all over the world. 
and uh, Hands Across the Sea is the first one. So uh, there are, are no Sousa marches on there, as far as I know, other than that one, uh, because he didn't write, well, that wouldn't be all over the world now, would it? It would, that he gets the one. But, um, but this is not Hands Across the Sea, this is Golden Jubilee. And so the uh, first thing you want to notice is that it's, it, it, they give you tempos on all these, which this is the best one of these lists I've seen in a long time because they actually tell you what they want. Uh, so 120 we got, right? And that's to the half note. Sorry. Right? So I'm just singing along with... The, I'm just trying to get a sense of how this piece goes since I've never played it and I uh, haven't practiced it yet. But uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I'm not going to... Uh, we're not. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna call this one uh, uh, canon, or, or uh, th this is not in any way how you, how you should necessarily play it. But it's my best guess, right? That's all we can do. And I would play this one on B flat trumpet, even though it's easy enough on C. Um, it's probably just better to do it on B flat because you'd never play a C trumpet on a Sousa piece. Uh, in, in the band, at least. They, there are certainly transcriptions for the orchestra that put them in string keys, and then all bets are off. But in this case, it's not a hard key for either trumpet, and B-flat is the answer most of the time for, for Sousa. So make sure all these work. Okay. And what I just did is the way I would practice this. So da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Let's see. Oh. And mark in stuff that you're going to miss. I already have plenty of things. i got to pick the right... Nope, that's a red pencil. That's not going to help us at all. One pencil I pick is the worst possible... Okay, um, there's an A sharp that I was just about to miss in my playthrough. And then this F sharp, I know it's there, but better to mark it, right? Okay, well, we're going to go for it. And uh, the, the important thing I think about this one in terms of the audition is that you know the style of a march, right? That you know how uh, Sousa type music is played because they do a lot of it. And, uh, in fact, they're held to the highest standard for it, right? They're, they're the, the best band in the land for uh, the type of music that they play, and they do a lot of this. And, in fact, Sousa, of course, was the director of the Marine Band, and uh, maybe this was written for them. I don't know. Again, uh, do your homework. I, uh, I will do my homework, and if you want, I will, I will uh, I'll, I'll do a whole thing on just this piece, if you'd like. But I thought for the purposes of just this uh, hour or so that we're going to do this, I'll, uh, I'll show you the process and give you the uh, sort of the, the process answer, and then uh, we can all do our own homework, right? Here we go. <laughs> Again, I keep forgetting to turn off my mic. I'm so sorry. But that's kind of how a Sousa march goes. And that's what it needs to be. All right. Now, that's the first round. And uh, in, if you think about this strategically, of course you have to pass the first round, right? That's the round that you have to get through to get to the other rounds. So you might think, oh, well, I better practice that the most because I got to get that first round. I got to get through that first round and get into the final or the semifinals and the finals. Uh, 
yes, you do, but you have to win the final round. So and those are the excerpts that you want to have the best prepared um, because those are the ones that are going to win you the audition. The preliminary round is just to weed out people who really don't have any business being there or who just maybe ha didn't have a good day that day or, um, or maybe just don't know the style of a march or uh, uh, perhaps just, you know, sounded real out of tune, whatever it is, uh, the, it's, it's more to weed people out and, and make the pool very small, a small, a very good pool of small, uh, oh boy, a very good smaller pool of candidates is what they're interested in. And that's why there's only the five excerpts. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. There's only five excerpts on it. It should only take them about five or six, seven minutes per person to listen to that. And then they can, and they may not even get through everybody. I'm not sure uh, if they'll listen to all of it or if they will uh, cut you off once they've heard enough. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. If you get cut off and you've, you felt like you played great, then they're like, yeah, 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 this guy gets to the finals, great. Um, and if you feel like you've been you know, flopping all over the place, well, then you probably got cut. But anyway, so yeah, so, the, so that's the first, the first round you gotta get through. This is the stuff where a bunch of them, uh, and you wanna identify this about each excerpt. Can you win the audition with this excerpt or do you, is it only an excerpt that can lose you the audition, right? You need to play it well no matter what, but uh, you, you, you might have an idea of the purpose of it, right? So um, there are some people watching now, so if you have questions about anything, please save me from myself uh, because I'm about to try to play about 15 excerpts in a row uh, with only just my own voice protecting me. So uh, ask questions about this, that'd be great. Uh, okay, so we're going to keep going straight down the list. This is the Pines of Rome. Uh, now this has a an arranger. Uh, it says Respighi and then slash Duker, Duker. Uh, I'm not sure, but usually that's somebody in the band that's arranged it for the band. Uh, I don't see any significant differences from the orchestral version of this to this. Um, it just says from a distance instead of off stage. And so, uh, but I think the idea is pretty much the same. This is another C trumpet excerpt for me. It is in B-flat trumpet, though, so uh, feel free to do your worst on any trumpet that makes sense. All right. Now, again, this is a lyrical etude. Uh, etude. This is a lyrical excerpt, and uh, its rhythms need to be precise. It seems like you could play this really freely, but that's not really true. There are other moving parts that happen on stage while you're some, some, at some distance, right? Uh, off stage perhaps. And so you have to play very rhythmically precise. And the eighth note is what you want to sort of uh, feel here. This now you have to know, again, two against three in the triplet. But if, if you just fill up that beat with all three notes, then you can, you can sort of cheat and then, then go back to eighth note. And I just sort of think this undulating back and forth of eighth notes is what I want. Um, yeah, uh, it, the, the other part is, you know, where do you breathe and uh, do you breathe um, for certain parts? And I, I think the answer is, well, you're allowed to breathe every two bars, as it says in the phrase marks, right? Um, and you can consider those slurs if you want. Uh, I sort of tongued a little bit in Outdoor Overture, and I think that's allowed too, as long as it's legato. Uh, the, 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 the slur marking is only a slur on a brass instrument, right? Or I should say a wind instrument. Uh, they don't slur in string world, right? They play legato and usually under one bow. And so um, it's okay to tongue a little bit as long as you're not trying to separate the notes with the tongue, uh, if that makes sense. I, I, take it for what it's worth. Uh, if you can tongue legato tongue, then that is still allowed according to what's written on the page. Uh, but I tend to slur everything in this one. Uh, that, or I should say, I, I tend to slur everything that's not um, explicitly marked slur until I get to places where there are explicit slurs. And then uh, it makes more sense to make a difference, right? That that might be a phrase mark instead of a slur. So uh, anyway, and I think you can breathe at any of the points where the phrase mark isn't. Um, but the last one is a tricky spot. And so if it helps you to play the excerpt without breathing there, uh, helps you get that G on top of the staff, that last one, and I think that's okay to not breathe. Uh, it's up to you. All right, here we go.
and you'll notice too in that one, I strategically use vibrato as a, a rhythmic event. So I start and stop my vibrato on beats usually. Uh, and that's for, that's for the benefit of the audition committee. Uh, if they're sort of zoning out because they've heard 85 auditions today, um, I'm showing them that I have good time and giving them a rhythmic event, but I'm trying to do it subtly, right? So um, it's not because their time is bad or anything, although it works if, some, if you play this for an audition committee and somebody does have bad time but thinks that they have good time, this helps them make the same time that you have, right? So they, they're hearing those events and they're saying, oh yeah, that's in time. Um, but just for, just for a worn out committee, it's, uh, it's nice to just be like, yeah, I don't have to think about this. I, I can hear this person's time and it sounds really pretty. But also it's one of the ways we do vibrato. If you listen to really great operatic singers, there is an engagement point of the vibrato that often coincides with some sort of rhythmic event uh, in the piece. And so even though they do it a little more naturally than we do, I think that's a good way to do it. And it, it keeps me honest with my time. Otherwise I zone out, right? So that's, that's part of it. Anyway, uh, that's Pines of Rome now. Uh, L'Histoire de Soldat, the Royal March from The Soldier's Tale by Stravinsky. This is a tricky one, and it's tricky because there are these fivelets. Now, there's a story about these fivelets that they, they have a slur mark over them in the original, and uh, apparently Stravinsky wanted them slurred, according to sort of the colloquial, um, the sort of story that goes around about um, him asking why people are tonguing it when it's very clearly slurred. Uh, but also Stravinsky didn't always, he wasn't always like super accurate with, like he, he would do his own versions of his pieces uh, when he conducted them, even though it's not what he wrote on the page. And then later he would criticize other people for not doing what was on the page. And so, yeah, it was part of, that was part of the culture though, the, the, like sort of making controversy made news and new, no, you know, being in the news is good. So uh, anyway. The, what do you do about the fivelets? Well, you have to tongue them. Here, the slurs have been removed, so you're not going to slur them. And that may be why it was re-typeset. Uh, re, re, I say typeset. Uh, you know what I mean. Re-etched. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you're going you're gonna to tongue them. And it says 112, which... Right? That's the trombone from the beginning of this. And so you need, you need to play it close to that tempo. Um, and there, aren't, there, there are a lot of people out there with tricks to this, right? So there's the uh, just, tongue, just double tongue. Or two T's at the end. It's hard to do that, really. Um, I get confused halfway through. My tongue doesn't want to do this, right? So uh, you can just, you, but you can learn. You, if you want to do it that way, you can slow it down and learn the coordination and just feel really comfortable. I can do one that way, but I can't do the three in a row. Um, but my dad showed me this a long time ago, and uh, you can just single tongue it. You just have to have a fast single tongue, right? And the way you do that is to focus on the air going through and making the single tongue in a, a very small place rather than going ta 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 ta. You go. And if you can say it, you can play it. So practice that. And then make sure you're musical for the rest of it, that it, it has this lilt to it uh, because of the meter and because of how the other parts are interacting, right? Uh, you have a lot of other eighth notes sort of swimming around in this part and, um, and some very nice sort of percussion as well that's, that's giving it this pop. So you want to make sure you've got the right style. And again, the context is always going to be one of the best things that you can do. Make sure you know the whole piece. So let's see how close we can get on this one. So something like that. Uh, it, it's right at the edge of my ability to single tongue, but it's there. It's fine. All right, now we've got some serious B flat time. I'm sorry, I've got a 
my my nose keeps itching while I'm playing, which means I've got like a an errant mustache hair or something. So sorry if I'm. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's my dad right there. I think I can't remember your username, but thanks, Dad, if you're on the chat. All right, so now these get into brass band stuff. We're uh, now we're on festive overture. Uh, it's the third part in the semifinals, and um, this is like British brass band style stuff. So you're not going to see this in the orchestra, but you will see this in, in band transcriptions. This one is the Huntsberger transcription, which is uh, for wind ensemble. And it's really about being able to play a scale really fast with the right style, right? So there's not much else to it, but can you play your B-flat major scale? And, oh, and Josh is here too. You, and Josh, you're not going to take this, are you? Oh, you said I think you weren't, but anyway, but you know all these excerpts anyway. Um, so can you play, and a lot of people, they won't, they won't practice their scales really fast because they figure, well, I can play them at a pretty fast speed, so I could probably play them at any speed. But this is very fast, and, and this is one of the things that we, uh, we, we really need to work on more. So uh, I'll do my, my darndest here. Uh, I, would, I would do some, to practice this, I would do a lot of singing and fingering and play, playing it slowly. Um, but you're going to go pretty fast on this. Right, just make sure you that this is this this has a, a, a sort of noisy spring to it right now, so that's bothering me a little bit, but yeah, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Not super clean, but I'll take it for now. It's it's about not getting stopped up in it, I, I think. And uh, yeah, for an audition, you want it to be really lightning clean, or just every note. Um, let me see if I can do a little bit better. That was a little closer. Uh, and then it's gonna the the second part is also gonna be. Um, oh yeah, just so Josh is on the chat. He just finished a concert with the SU Brass Ensemble, which is where I learned this piece this fast. Um, I never really played it before, and uh, they play it a lot, and so we did Festive Overture. I don't think it's in the same key, though, is it, Josh? Uh, you can tell me if... It, if uh, but I remember how hard it was to learn all these violin parts, basically, on B-flat trumpet. And um, anyway, but I'll finish the excerpt. The other part, this one is, you know, you, you got to... There's a lot of long notes, and somebody who doesn't study is going to play them slower, even though it very clearly says presto 168 to the half note. But if you know how festive overture goes, you would never play this very slow. So. They skip off the best part. The best part's coming up. Uh, but anyway, that's that's a little bit what it's like. And you can see that's that's pretty significantly fast. And it doesn't look that fast on the page, but make sure you play along. And there's plenty of recordings of the brass band version and the wind ensemble versions out there. So play along with recordings on this one, and you'll feel really confident. All right, moving on. Oh, we got some good ones coming up here. Uh, they're all really good, really. The, this list is, it, that's why I wanted to do it. Uh, oh, they haven't played it yet since Josh has been there, but... All right, so this one is Swan Lake from Tchaikovsky, and this one we have to talk about a little bit because there's two ways people do this. Um, now, I just got done in the other one saying you need to really show off your good time. Um, that's true. Uh, this one, people play with time a lot. I play this on C trumpet because it's trumpet in A. Um, again, do, do which, what, whichever you want, uh, whichever you sound great on. 
Uh, it's actually not bad on a trumpet, but that's not one of the trumpets they listed. So, uh, but it's it's a little bit logy because how long the instrument is, and this really needs to be crisp. So, um, uh, yeah, not much to say about it, but uh, that you need to make sure that you you know can play what is a D major. Uh, yeah, so. Um, this is one where time sometimes changes based on the conductor, based on the performer. So you have to make your mind up. How are you going to play these? A lot of times we rush, we, we're, we are, uh, the interpretation is to play this kind of in, in a, in a big time, but not so much strict in the small time. So in other words, I might go, um, So that I'm rushing towards a, a beat, but the but these um, something and something and else, and, right? So that those come at the same time, no matter what I do in between. I like a little bit uh, closer to real regular time, um, just because it gets real soupy otherwise. Um, so anyway, and then you, th this one is molto piumoso at cello rondo to 152, and that that really changes, but depending on the person, right? But you want to be pretty much in time by that by the end of that run right there. I would play the second half of it pretty much in time. Um, and it may, if you look at the orchestra part, it may actually tell you exactly when you're supposed to be at uh, the final tempo. And it may be that same spot. Maybe that's why I do it that way, right? But at any rate, uh, I won't do too, anything too soupy. If I can find the things that are rattling. Okay. that last those last two are just right in time you don't have to try to like parse the the math that is like six eight in presto with the but it's just bum bum right again listen to recordings um yeah that's all there is to that one a little bit of uh of josh says swagger on here yeah a little bit of swagger on this that, that you're not uh it's not perfectly in time that's boring uh in this case right but that it's something that you can follow, right? That, that you don't want to just play randomly. And it's certainly, it's going to sound like you're trying to show off if you do too much. So don't do too much. Um, okay, next one, Capriccio Italian. Uh, this is great because I've been practicing my Brandt number eight, which is Capriccio Italian. Um, it's also in B flat. I'm going to play it on C because that puts in the key of D, which is better. Uh, I don't know. There's not much about this one. Just, just watch the articulation, right? Um, and it's got to be really precise. That you, you don't want to go. Dun da. Oh no, I forgot to count. Da 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 da. Right? Uh, there are there are some interpretations on some recordings where this note is held a little bit longer, but then everybody does it together uh, a little bit later. It's essentially, you know, 
just trying to make it more dramatic and crunch it into a smaller time frame later. But uh, this is really, for me, this is a straight ahead one. And it's, uh, this is also a Tchaikovsky slash winter bottom. Again, if you can find the real arrangements of these and listen to them, you'll get a better idea of how it's probably a Marine band recording that you can get that has that, because it's probably somebody in the band. I know for a fact that later uh, the, uh, the Nowlin arrangement is somebody who's still in the band, right? Uh, well, I don't, I guess I don't know for a fact it could be somebody related, but, um, I looked up all the band members to see if I could, if I could, uh, find out why, you know, these specific arrangements, if they were by people in the band, uh, and, you know, at least one seems to be. So, um, right in time for this one. That's all there is to it. Just right, right away. I, I'm, I'm just gonna give up on turning off the mic. If I remember to do what I will, but um, it, it just can't be late. And I'll have to go back and listen to the recording. This is one to record yourself doing and just absolutely. Uh, I was late that time. Oh, a little early. All right. Just make sure that you're not getting off that tie any time, but exactly the right time. And if you do it enough, you'll, you'll feel confident that you're gonna do it right. And I would say confident, and if you're if you're sure you do it pretty much every time, that's good enough to convince somebody else that you're doing it perfectly uh, in the moment. So okay, let's keep going. Oh, this is a great one. I also play this one on C trumpet, um, but you don't have to. Oh, there's some stuff on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's the term. Swagger is one of the okay. Swagger is the term that one of the premier band guys used uh, when Josh, I guess, talked to him or saw a masterclass or something about that excerpt. So Swagger is uh, pre-approved for premier band auditions. Um, and then he has an equipment question. Uh, have you heard of anyone using the Yamaha Chicago Gen 3 tuning slide on a Gen 1 horn? Is it worth it? I have, sort of. I just, uh, I ran into somebody at a, at a local ITG who, uh, and I, forgot my C trumpet and I had to borrow one. And I, I won't say who it was, but it was a, a, a teacher, uh, not at that school, but from somewhere else. And he said, well, I brought my, I, all I brought was my C trumpet, but I'm not really using it. I just brought it to practice. You were welcome to use it. And, you know, I thought about COVID stuff for a little bit, but, um, but he was fully vaccinated and didn't have any symptoms. And I thought, well, okay, I can probably get away with it. And his was a Gen 1 body. Let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, a Gen 1 body. And he had a Gen, I believe, a Gen 2 lead pipe and a Gen 3 tuning slide on, this is a Chicago uh, Yamaha we're talking about, Chicago Symphony model Yamaha. And um, it was, it played like a dream. It was amazing. I told him if he ever sells it, he has to sell it to me, uh, which he laughed about. So um, now, is it worth it? Uh, well, the reason he did it is because I believe he got the body without a lead pipe or tuning slide on it. Um, and so he had to have something and he just got the most like available and recent equipment and it just worked, right? Would I go out of my way to get that? Probably not. I just buy a Gen 3 if I thought that those parts were good. Uh, but if there's something is specific that you like about an old horn, um, then absolutely. I, I, pre I prefer the Gen 1 Yamaha B-flat Chicago. And so I get those, but I have a Gen 2 lead pipe that I play with sometimes. Uh, and for certain applications, I think it would be better. And since I own two uh, first-generation Yamaha B-flat Chicago horns, eventually I'll probably put one of those lead pipes on one of those horns. Um, but I also just always try the newest horn, and it, it's, it's a lot easier to get a fully formed product than to try to piecemeal it together because you start messing with somebody else's already very good design. And that's there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you you screw up some of the really magical parts in there or just something basic like intonation because that lead pipe is like one millimeter shorter. And, you know, it's a little weird things like that that really can make a big difference. And uh, when you get it straight from the factory, I mean, one of the reasons to play Yamaha is that they all play really pretty similarly and they're really good instruments. So, um, but if, if you, if you, you know, your lead pipe gets crushed off of your horn because of, uh, I don't know, uh, you put it under the plane and they didn't pack it right or something, then yeah, you know, then it's worth 
it's worth getting the latest equipment, put it on there, see if it works. If it doesn't, you sell it and buy the new third gen. So yeah, that's my thanks for the rest. Okay, this is Vaughn Williams' Dakota Martial. And this is absolutely a context one, right? It's also very long and it has rest and I recommend taking the rest. Um, but it's, this is another big sound one that also has these contrasting, like you're playing marcato, but then you're also playing more legato, almost something in between. And then you're actually doing some slurs and then you've got staccato. And so you really have to be very careful. And this, this is a dead giveaway. If you've never heard uh, Vaughn Williams, if you've never heard band, uh, if you're an orchestral trumpet player who's been in orchestras their whole life and you've never played this kind of music, this is a dead giveaway that you're, uh, when you play it like an orchestra piece, because it's not, it's not the same kind of thing. Uh, you have to really know your context here. So, uh, without belaboring it too much, here we go. actually not a bad uh, Vaughn Williams there for me. I usually don't do that well on that one, but there's a couple of hard pick off high note spots that you have to really feel good about. Um, so, but anyway, there you go. That's, I think, a good way to do it. And again, context, con context matters so much in these auditions. They can tell, they've played these pieces before, right? Even if it's all saxophone players on the panel, they know your part. Uh, and if they know it better than you and they know their part as well, well, then if you play the context improperly, they're going to, they hate that, right? That's, they go, well, I have a melody here and they're playing right over it. Uh, and so, and, and there probably will be a mix of different instrumentalists on this. There probably will be one trumpet player at least, uh, and probably one of the music directors. Uh, I would say probably the assistant director for the first round, uh, if at all. But uh, there will also be uh, low brass on there and there probably will be several woodwind players and maybe a percussionist. So depends on how big they want their panel to have to be. And um, so, but yeah, you have to satisfy all those people and knowing the context is how you do that, as well as having good time, tone, and intonation. Okay, so now, Seven of the Heroes. Now this one is funny because uh, now they've, they have the slash, uh, William, uh, John Williams wrote this piece, uh, slash Lavender, and that is again the arranger. And thank goodness for him or her, because, or them, um, because it's down a step from the orchestral version, and that means I don't have to play high Bs and Cs on my C trumpet. So thank you, Lavender, who, whomever you are. Uh, so I would definitely play this as written on B-flat trumpet. And again, this one, context, uh, there's, there's not much. Uh, it's pretty open. So, uh, but you, you've got to play it in time, of course, and, uh, and do everything it says majestically. Uh, absolutely, right? Cantabile, mm -hmm. yeah, and a little broader. So I haven't looked at this one in a long time. I used to do this one back and forth with my, uh, with my alto trumpet playing the bass trumpet part at the end of this piece. Uh, I will try to, I'll find the video. Josh, if you still have some of those old videos when you were a student, send them to me because uh, I, I don't think I can do that stuff anymore like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I would play the bass tr trombone part with my left hand, and then I would play the, the, uh, the, the C trumpet parts at the end with my right hand and switch back and forth, and you know, just silly stuff. Anyway, um, okay.
So I'm, uh, I, I almost put, I forgot to push the button uh, and mute my mic, but I'm glad I didn't. Uh, I, what I'm doing before I start this is I'm imagining the context of it, right? So right before this excerpt starts, you have right? You, that's where you come in. That's bad singing, but the, there's a there's a, 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 a timpani, a very soft timpani sound uh, that's that's doing this dun, 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 kind of rhythm. I believe that's the context anyway. Um, I, again, I, I would check. Don't take my word for it. It's in a book. So a little vibrato here goes a long way. Uh, faster vibrato, I don't know why, just because I'm hearing Tim Morrison a little bit more, and even though I don't have a recording of him doing this, but he played a lot for John Williams. It sounds like it was, um, it's the kind of thing that John Williams would write for him. There's also a very good uh, Boston Symphony, which I believe is Tom Rolfe's playing, and uh, that's a great one. And he, he has a slightly slower vibrato than, um, than uh, I just used, uh, and, and that I think... Uh, would be on some of the other recordings of other pieces, but uh, really nice orchestral, uh, slightly faster than normal vibrato that I, fits really well here. So that's what I'm kind of hearing. And you can get lots of, there's uh, on, just on the iTunes store, at least about 10 years ago, there are six really great recordings, uh, or I should say six recordings of this piece uh, of varying quality, but at least four of them are really good. And uh, you'll know which ones, and not necessarily the ones you'd think uh, by, the, by the names, but by a good one, by at least one good one. And uh, I'm sure you can find them on Spotify too. So, uh, all right, that's enough of that. Oh boy, now we've got, now this one is tr tricky because I would normally play this on a C trumpet. And I guess I should, but I haven't practiced it. Um, I, do, I should do what I... I normally do, right? That's my best shot. But this one would probably be easier on a B flat trumpet. This is a Hindemith uh, second movement of the symphony in B flat. And I keep I keep hammering on this, but context is absolutely everything because you play a duet here with who? The saxophone. And so if you don't know where to get out of the way and where to come like really come up and it's marked in the part but you have to know the context. You have to know kind of how these parts work together. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to listen for when I play this. Uh, I've never played this actually live. We, we did this with Wes Kidgel, which it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Wes. Um, but we did this at DePaul when I was a student there, and Wes played this solo just absolutely gorgeous every rehearsal. And uh, it was also with uh, LeKendrick Little, uh, a really brilliant saxophone player who went on to be in the premier bands, I believe. So, um, great experience getting to play with those guys uh, back then. Okay, let's see. Let's see about Hindemith. This list is getting harder, and I realize that the commercial stuff's at the end. So, you know, eh, not not my smartest move, was it? Huh. Josh is making jokes in the chat.
forgot to turn it off again. At least that one wasn't too loud. Uh, yeah, the, the big lick that everybody's scared of is this... But you can just lightly tongue it and it won't do what I just did, right? I, just a very light tongue. And it's secure and it doesn't really disturb it at all. Again, like I said, the C trumpet's not really the best. Uh, it, it's, it puts it in a terrible key, but it's just the one I know. Uh, and uh, and there's a lot of little rhythmic things here that you you don't you don't want to play too sloppily, right? These um, uh, let's see if I find one. Oh, right at the beginning. You don't want to go. And certainly not. Right, it's, it's it, it, you can you want to be precise, but it's okay if you exaggerate things. It's just not okay if you make them more averaged out, right? Or here, see what I mean? That rhythm has to be flowing. It can't be. Uh, right, that's not gonna. That's, it's, it's just not the way the piece sounds. And so you have to know the whole sound of this rhythm, not just each beat. You, and this, this weeds them out like, I wish this was in the pre preliminary for their sake, because this weeds out people with bad time. This weeds out people who don't really read rhythms very well. This weeds out people who don't hear whole phrases at a time, but actually play beat by beat, which is uh, just a deadly kind of thing here. Um, and people who can't play in bad keys or don't know what E sharp is really like, right? Um, I, th I mean, I admit, I thought about it for a second, and I just went, no, you know, you better just go with what the sound of the piece is, because if you try to think about what an E sharp is on C trumpet down a step, uh, as opposed to this F sharp that you're already playing, which is your E, uh, you're just, your brain's going to fry. And so I just went with the sound, and it w I got lucky. So anyway, all right. Uh, at the end there, that's the other tricky part. And you just don't want to breathe every time. I did once and I regretted it. Uh, but this... Uh... You, you'll, if you breathe every time you put a, a space in there and, and drop your whole support, then you got to find it again, and those are they get more and more deadly to try to come back in on. So, just be careful of that. This is a beautiful. This I could listen to every day, honestly. I would be happy to listen to that section. Uh, all right, now we got we're back to Charlier. Oh, and I'm almost out of batteries here. Well, we'll see. We'll maybe take a battery break uh, before the 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 uh, the commercial stuff. That'd be a good idea, right? Um, I have batteries right here too, so we should be good. But uh, yeah, this last one is the Charlier uh, Du Style number six. And uh, again, B flat trumpet. And uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and play it. And if anybody has uh, questions, I'll talk about it after. And I'll do a little battery switch as well. So.
Okay, I think we're back. So, uh, tricks to this one. Well, uh, I, I did a bad job on one spot where I, uh, well, I mean, I missed a note, which is always bad, but uh, poco a poco stringendo e crescendo means faster and faster and louder, right? And then you stop getting fast. And I, instead, instead of that, I played as, I played it kind of the same and then I got slower. And that's not what it says, actually. So I can play that part again for you. But uh, one of the biggest and baddest notes for everybody is the last A sharp. It's carried through the, it's carried through accidental, uh, just in this section, that's the end of the excerpt. But, let's see. Right? Don't play A natural there. It's bad. It's wrong. Um, but anyway, this, this is the part that I didn't do a good job. I'll, I'll trust my fingers a little more. And the reason it's important to do that correctly is because if you don't, then the next section goes too slowly, and that's what I did wrong. Uh, but otherwise, you know, just learn the etude, learn it well enough that you, uh, I mean, there's everything going on. There's different rhythms, there's bad notes, there's uh, bad intervals, there's difficult physical challenges, there's dynamics that are surprising, there's different articulations. That's why we use Charlier's for auditions now, because there's a lot going on all at once. So that's what you want to do. So there you go. That's the normal part of the list. Now this, this next part is the commercial part. And um, like I said, too bad for me that this is, it comes up now. Um, but nothing can be done about it, right? Um, so uh, it starts with a West Side Story transcription. Uh, again, Bernstein, Lavender. Uh, Bernstein, of course, wrote West Side Story. Lavender is obviously one of the arrangers, staff arrangers, I would imagine, if not one of the members of the band. Uh, well, the staff arrangers are members of the band as well, but I mean one of the, one of the instrumentalists in the band as well. And so, um, uh, now this one is funny because they say that you should only play B flat and A, uh, sorry, B flat and C trumpet in this audition, and uh, this starts with the D trumpet part. Now, I can show you I would never, I would never, ever, ever play this on D trumpet, but here's a D trumpet. It's not a very good one. I mean, it's not, not for this stuff anyway. This says, this is, it's not real in tune with itself, but it's a fun horn to have. It's a small bore D trumpet. Here's why I wouldn't play it. Um, first of all, it sounds different. Second of all, it's really hard to switch back to the B flat trumpet in two bars of two, two time or two, four time where you're going like, that's that that means I have I can go uh da da one two one and then I'm B flat trumpet. I don't think so. So I would play this all on B flat trumpet, but here's the other reason why. It's a shake on D trumpet, right? It just sounds weird, right? And that shake is like really, you know, wide. Um if I put this back down, now a lot of people play this on C trumpet because they've played it in the orchestra, uh, and uh, and that's how they like it. I play it on B flat trumpet in the orchestra too, just because it sounds right. I I, I don't like to play jazz on a C trumpet. It just weird. It's weird to me. And this is pretty jazz oriented, right? Uh, I mean, if you don't know West Side Story, or if you think West Side Story isn't jazz, well, I don't know. I mean, we could talk about it, I guess, but it's. I would, call, I would consider it fully jazz uh, for an orchestra, right? For a pit orchestra originally. So uh, that means you have to transpose for a couple of bars. Um, and D trumpet on B flat trumpet is a weird one. We don't normally do up a third, up a major third, but um, don't think about it too much, right? Just play the notes so you know the way it sounds. You can also just get another part that has it all written out for B flat trumpet, which is any of the orchestra parts. Uh, and, uh, and that makes it a lot easier. So I'll do my best. I play this still on my big mouthpiece because it doesn't go super duper high. Uh, I think the worst it does is uh, E comp, uh, E. 
right? Yeah, it goes up to high E's there. Um, now we'll do our worst, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. The staff arrangers are absolutely incredible. They don't get any credit uh, most of the time, and they uh, they have impossible deadlines. I know one of my friends is the uh, one of the sta other staff arrangers for uh, one of the other premier bands, and they constantly have deadlines that are like rearrange this for rearrange this um, thirteen piece group piece that we're going to do with like Sting uh, for a seven piece group that sounds just as good by tomorrow morning. And it's like 6 p.m. And you're like, what? What? And they still, and they go right on TV and they play the arrangement and it sounds great. So yeah, those staff arrangers, that Josh was just saying, are incredible. And um, yeah, it's, they, they do work that they should be, they would, they should, there should be five people doing the work that most of any of them do. So anyway, uh, I haven't looked at this either. So let me... Okay, I think we'll be we'll be good. Yeah, overnight, really. So sorry, that one I should have turned off uh, the mic. But anyway, well, it was just loud. Uh, in this type of music, uh, so if you if you're if you've never done any kind of the jazz stuff that we're getting into, the the, the commercial lead stuff, tongue stops are a necessity. Don't be afraid to do them. Right that at the end there. An aggressive tongue stop, da 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 da, saves you from having to reset and try to play ta da ta ha ta ta, right? Absolutely, don't do that. Um, and even da 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 da, that that gives me an ability to build up some compression behind uh, the tongue before I release it into those higher notes, so my lips don't have to try to, you know, I don't have to generate it from bursts of air, which would just beat my lips up the whole time. Uh, and then don't be too. You got to work on those licks, but don't be too crazy about them being precise in the moment, right? Practice them so they are precise, and then blow through them. Uh, that's my advice on that one. This is a this is a great one. And if you want to play a shallow mouthpiece on it, this is the commercial section. So maybe that's what they're looking for. I'm certainly going to switch to it now. So. Uh, now, one of my students has one of my really good shallow mouthpieces, so I'm going to play this one and hope that it's not terrible. Uh, but I am running the meter on it because um, it's very shallow. But this is my, I got a this is a picket dock back bore um, that I I like for a little more efficient lead playing. It's it's a little tighter than my KT Star that I have for uh, for other stuff. Uh, which is a Warburton backboard that I highly recommend too. And then this is my 6A4A with a different rim on it. So this is like really blistering stuff. Uh, also, so these, these arrangements that are coming up, these are all arrangements except for the uh, Goodwin. Uh, uh, yeah, except for the, the Gordon Goodwin fat band uh, arrangement. These are all arranged for the band, and so they aren't available. But I bet you could find... The Marine Band, at least parts, are, these are probably jazz band arrangements, right? But uh, parts of the Marine Band doing these. So uh, what can you do instead? Well, you can understand the, the, the actual piece. So Stormy Weather. If you've never heard Stormy Weather, you've got a lot of listening to do. Um, it's just a great tune. And, and almost always felt in 12-8, sort of in a triplet feel in 4, right? Uh, this has a little tricky two-beat uh, two bar um, just into the shout chorus. And, uh, oh, what I was going to say earlier is that these, it says that these are optional excerpts. Um, that might be so, 
Uh, and you could even make an argument for, well, they're not optional to the guy who's going to win the audition, right? Uh, that someone will play them, and they'll play them well enough to win. Well, that's not necessarily true. The, the, these bands are always looking for people who can be crossover players. And there's a lot of cross-contamination. People who play in one of the premier bands sometimes will sub in others, and so it's very valuable to them to have people who can do all of this stuff. But if you play the hell out of your first, uh, uh, the, 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 the final round of the uh, non-commercial stuff, and you say, well, I really can't do any commercial stuff, they're still going to want you to play in the Marine Band, right? So don't worry if you can't do this stuff. You should still work on it just in case they ask for it, and you should be able to show that you have some kind of competence. Certainly on the West Side Story, that, that's, that's still considered like classical uh, orchestra repertoire, uh, even though it's jazz style, right? So um, I would consider it jazz music, but classical groups play it, and even if they don't play any other jazz, that piece gets played. So you should have that one at least. These other ones, well... Do your best, but um, be prepared to, to be called out to play them. But if you can't do them, it's maybe not the end of the world. Although, certainly if you play the whole audition perfectly in a classical style, and then you also can play all of the, the jazz stuff, well, now you're really getting hired, right? So, so it's better to have it all. But um, if you're just starting now, and you haven't really done any jazz or listened to any jazz, um, January 31st is coming way too fast for that project. But just get started listening. Listen to as much uh, of all of this stuff as you can, right? Okay, so anyway, uh, what can we do? Well, I can know stormy weather. So I do. I know stormy weather, right? And I can say, oh, it's 72 to the dotted quarter. Do, do, dot. Do, do, dot. Da, 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 ba, da, 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 it's got to be one of these, right? Shout, shout choruses, basically coming out of maybe a, a maybe it's a saxophone solo or something, or maybe it's just out of the vocal line, right? And bands taking over. So you want to you want to have some predetermined articulations, maybe that aren't even written here, that show that you know the style of this stuff. We'll we'll try for this double high A flat too, and we'll see where it goes. We'll, we'll see when we get there. That's a better way to say it. Okay. okay, you know, got to go for it. I can try that one once, once more. We'd only have two more after this. So let me try once more with the mu mu muted uh, vocal mic here. bit better a little bit better um josh you can just download this right off the internet if you type in president's own marine band trumpet cornet vacancy it's the first thing that pops up uh make sure you get the january 31st 2022 list but it's the first thing that popped up for me and they also sent it to me in an email so if you can't find it i'll just send you the email uh it all it was was just a like a you know attachment basically so there you go stormy weather my best shot at guessing, because uh, we can't get these arrangements. And I mean, I can't, I can't get the whole arrangement, but I guarantee there's some video of the, of the band probably playing it out there. Or maybe there isn't, and that's why they included it. But make sure you know your context. This next one, Come Fly With Me, right? Uh, this one is going to be 
probably related to like the Live at the Sands Frank Sinatra recording, uh, which is the one we all know. It's not the same arrangement at all, right? But you got to be hearing that kind of, you know. Uh, now this is swing. Uh, it says swing 180. And we can check the tempo. This was, it felt a little fast to me at first, but then once you actually get into it, it's like, oh yeah, just So sing it first. If you can't sing it first, you're not gonna you don't wanna be beating up your face trying to play it, right? Thanks, Dad. And in these arrangements too, especially the Sinatra type ones, dynamics are huge, right? If you if you don't if you have a piano on the page, man, you better play that piano. Uh, forte and fortissimo, those are gonna you're gonna you're gonna pierce through the bands uh, with your shallow mouthpiece. So you don't have to worry too much about the super louds, but you really got to get down for the softs and not lose the notes and everything, right? Uh, I gotta listen to this last one again. I, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the Goodwin already. I know it's a rock tune, and I listened to it a bunch before I started, but that was like two hours ago. So, all right, here we go on "Come Fly with Me." Getting ahead of myself. This is the other thing you need to know about shallow mouthpiece. If you talk for too long, your lip has a chance to swell up and you can't remember how to, how to fit it in there. So. Adding a little bit of that sort of yuck on the, you know, that would be like a turn usually that you see. Uh, it's okay to add that if it helps you get it, I think. Uh, it also is very part of the style, and, and so you can do that a little, but if you do it, if you do it too aggressively, then it, again, it's something that the composer or the arranger could have written in, and they didn't, and so, you know, maybe play it cleanly. They might ask you to play it again if you don't play it very cleanly, so that's another one to, to think about. Okay, so now we're onto this Gordon Goodwin one, and uh, like I said, I listened to it before. It's a great, like, it's a great chart. It's uh, this is a tough lick. So this is this is one I might practice beforehand. Um, So really aggressive, um, you know, think obviously Wayne Bergeron, right? Uh, not that he's super aggressive or whatever, but uh, he's so clean when he plays. It's so absolutely precise and clean and beautiful that way. And, uh, and the effortless high range, right? So this one, we've got some high Gs and um, some pretty nasty, just like pick off stuff licks. Um, so if you don't pick off a high G, well, okay, that's fine. They want to hear you play the style. And if you can pick off a high G, then they definitely want to hear you do that. Um, but I'll give you my best uh, impersonation on this Gordon Goodwin chart that I listened to but forgot already.
and play half those rhythms right, right? You gotta get gotta get right on the in the pocket on these. We'll do some of the ending of this again. I'll do after the key change because that's uh, well, I, I screwed up before that. Okay, we'll start there. Yeah, a little too, a little too tight for me. But anyway, that's all right. Um, yeah, I, this this is like I said, it's this is bonus. So if you play the rest of the, the book really, really solidly, and then you can even attempt some of this stuff, that's a good thing, right? Um, and if you can really nail it, then that's even better. Uh, especially if you can get the the real recordings or the real arrangements of the real Marine Band doing it. And just play along with that stuff. Listen to it constantly and play along with it. This one, just listen to Gordon, Gordon Goodwin and uh, Wayne Bergeron play the lead part. You're, you're bound to get better just by listening to it. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the list. It's been uh, an hour and 30 minutes of me playing. I, I didn't warm up too much before this, uh, and I'm glad that I didn't because that's going to be my last note of the day, uh, except for maybe some warm down, you know, big mouthpiece stuff. But uh, anyway, thanks to my dad and Josh and whomever else came and, and uh, to, to check it out and, uh, and ask some questions and cheer me on. Uh, I, a part of me really wishes that I wasn't too old to audition for this gig. Uh, and and I'm, I guess that's part of the, my final thoughts on this is that uh, even just, well, let's see, I'm 37 now. 34 is the latest age waiver that they can give you. But three years ago, I absolutely was not ready to play this list down like I just did today. And again, I didn't play it perfectly. I know that. You don't have to tell me. Uh, but I haven't practiced this yet. If I practice this for a week or a month, or in this case, we have just about not quite a month, right? Uh, sorry, two months. Um, yeah, I could, I could play this list and I could, I could actually maybe win. But three years ago, when I was at the oldest possible age, there was no way I could do this uh, three years ago with any amount of practice. And that's just, that's because my trumpet playing wasn't good enough yet. So um, I think these, these tend to be really hard auditions to win because of that factor. You can't, you, you know, it's a rare person who has the experience and, uh, and their trumpet playing well together enough to do it. But there are those people out there. And, um, you know, and a lot of my babysitters and some of my trumpet teachers uh, have been in the premier bands and they they got in in their 20s and right when you're supposed to according to the rules and uh, had really great careers and I was just actually listening to uh, I, well I said at the beginning I was listening to the uh, Advocate Messenger band and um, and the picture on the front has Nancy Taylor who was one of my teachers and was a Marine Band uh, 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 member for several years and so um, yeah, it's it's a really great if you're if you're in your early twenties and you really feel like you can play this list, it's an absolutely great career. Any of the premier bands and a lot of people go on; they do five, six, seven, eight years or whatever. That you know, I think it has to be in even terms of three, but um, they do they do part of a career in the marine band. That gives them a chance to really get their playing in just the absolute critical shape, and then they go on to win all kinds of other jobs, uh, teaching or orchestra jobs. And uh, it's, it's not necessarily always a launch pad. You, you can do a whole career. I know um, there's one of my dad's former uh, piano bass players uh, played, did his whole career and played piano for like all the presidents at Christmas time, you know, uh, in, like for the president's family. So that's, that's what the president's own uh, is. It's a lot of privilege and a lot of opportunity. And um, so I, I highly recommend anybody who's watching this video to get out there and um, and just go go for it, and uh, you never know. Yeah, don't and don't not go because you know somebody else better than you is going because they might not go and they might not have a good day. So um, yeah, this is 
I, I wish I would, was able to do this when I was 22 or, or whatever, um, but I'm glad I can now. I'm glad I can make a video about it. So anyway, thank you so much. And uh, I will try, this was an impromptu one because I didn't do my normal stream Friday. Uh, but now that we're going into a break, I'll try to do a little bit more regular Friday streams. And uh, I'm going to see my dad for part of the holidays. And so maybe we can convince him to get on our, on the live stream and just like, maybe we'll play duets or answer questions or something. So anyway, uh, I'm volunteering you, dad. Sorry. All right. Uh, everybody take it easy. And um, thanks for coming. I hope this helped.